Have you ever said anything to your significant other that you regret the moment it comes out of your mouth? Something like, hey hun, what if I filmed a series doing like a hundred hour detail on paprika? Yup, stay tuned. So I actually can't believe that this is November weather right now. It was snowing last weekend, so I'm actually really excited that we got this little break in the weather so that I can go through and actually clean this car up because it's gonna take a lot of pressure washing and a lot of driveway cleanup again, which I'm super enthusiastic about. I haven't even started. And look at the mess. Look at the mess. Look at this, all this, all this freaking dirt from this car. Unbelievable. <laughs> oh my gosh, let's go. If you're new to the channel, Paprika is my wife's 2009 Suzuki SX4 Rallycross car that spent the first half of its life in Vermont and the last couple years competing off-road. I honestly can't tell you the last time this car has been washed and my wife just mentioned it's never been waxed since she bought it new. I've got my work cut out for me today. <laughs> For the initial wash and decontamination, I'm extensively using the pressure wash to remove as much mud as possible before putting any kind of wash mitt on the paint. The car is scratched and swirled enough for me to want to make things worse for myself once it gets in the shop. For the detailing aficionados out there, I'm using a Chemical Guys Honeydew Snow Foam, an MTM Hydro Foam Cannon, and a Sunjo Pressure Washer. I'm going to be including a bunch of links in the description to the products I'm using today, so be sure to check them out. I'm also using the two bucket method for the hand wash, and I'm completing the complete wash process twice before completing an iron decontamination and clay bar. <laughs> After being washed twice and having an iron decontamination, paprika is dried off, brought into the shop, and clay barred. It's important to remove as many contaminants as possible from the paint before beginning the paint correction process. But before we get started on the paint, I'm restoring the headlights. The process for restoring the headlights is pretty straightforward. After taping the surrounding areas, I'm scuffing the headlights using a gray scotch bright pad. With my pneumatic polisher, I'm using a shirt buff pad and polishing compound to quickly knock out the haze and bring back the headlights' original clarity. As with any polishing, a little bit goes a long way, so I'm only using a drop or two of the polishing compound every time I'm going to be buffing an area here. To finish it off, I'm using a yellow Rupus polishing pad to remove any remaining scratches from compounding. Mm -hmm. 
I'm interested to see how long it takes for the headlights to get cloudy again. I'll be applying a ceramic coating on them which is marketed to have UV resistance, but I'm honestly curious how it'll wind up holding up. Either way, the short term results are absolutely killer and they turned out awesome. With the headlights taken care of, my next challenge is to restore the faded, swirled, and neglected paint. As you might imagine, routinely being blasted with sand, dirt, and mud for Rallycross has not aged this paint very kindly. That, coupled with having gone through some automatic car washes, having never been waxed, there's a lot of paint correction to do here. I'm taping off a section of the hood so you guys can really see the before and after effects from paint correction. I'm experimenting with different pad and compound combinations to get a pairing that will let me hopefully do all the paint correction in a single stage. You want to find the least aggressive combination that gives you the best possible cut while removing the least amount of material. After only a couple minutes polishing, you can immediately see the before and after comparison and how much deeper and richer the paint looks in the taped off area. Now to just rinse and repeat on every painted surface and we'll be able to move on to ceramic coating. Rapid fire some tips on polishing. You want to keep the pad as flat as possible while you're working. You want to keep even pressure. You want to position yourself so you can see the paint reflecting in the light. You want to make sure any cords or air lines stay off the paint. You want to make sure to clean your pad often and you want to make sure to work in small areas. Most importantly, enjoy the process. Once you've got a system that's working, paint correcting a car can be incredibly therapeutic and satisfying to do. I'm using an open bottle of Kamikaze ISM that I had in my cabinet from another project. Once a bottle is opened, the crystallization process begins, so you want to be sure to use all of your ceramic before it crystallizes in the bottle. Since this was already opened, this also means my overall cost for the project was basically the cost of the microfibers that will not be reusable, a little bit of compound, and a lot of time. Not bad. <laughs> Be sure to follow manufacturer's recommendations when it comes to flash times between application and removal of the product. Kamikaze ISM has a very brief time before application and removal and it becomes very difficult to remove if you wait too long. 
I'm using two different colored microfibers so I can remove the bulk of the product with the first towel and the last little bit with the second. I'll go through a couple pairs of these microfibers as I'm going over the car because fresh microfibers seem to do a better job removing the coating rather than just pushing it around. With you. Removing the product, it's important to be watching the edges of the panels so that any product pushed onto the nearby panels is also removed. If you don't do that, there's going to be a little bit of haze that you're not going to see until after the coating's cured. Once the ceramics had time to cure, the last thing I'll be doing to the exterior is restoring all of the rubber and plastic trims around the car. This is probably a little controversial, but I'm actually just using a Gion tire coating on all the rubber and plastics. It seems to do a really good job, even though I'm not really sure how long it'll last. I'm not actually going to be using this on the tires right now though, because I'm thinking about painting the wheels in a future episode, and I don't want the oils on the rubber. Thank you guys so much for watching this. Let me know in the comments if you learned anything or if you like this kind of video. I know I got a little bit carried away here, but honestly, it's really cool when you see that much of a night and day before and after difference. It's hard not to get excited and hard not to want to keep getting at it um, just because the results look so good. Um, I've got more dats and content coming. I'm really excited to get back on that. Uh, I've got a lot of stuff on back order and there wasn't really enough for me to put together something really nice for you guys. Um, but there's more coming on that real soon. Um, and I will see you in the next episode. Oh,